Alright, lesson 4.7, Modeling and Solving Problems with Quadratic Functions. Uh, this is the lesson finale of uh, this unit and uh, it's quite fitting because what a lot of students kind of wonder with is uh, we've been doing all this work with quadratics but what is the, the rationale behind this? Um, we talked a little bit about some projectiles so that makes a parabola. You can also have this uh, in terms of business and so this is the, the rationale I'm going to go with right here. Uh, imagine for instance we were the owner of, uh, I don't know, let's say Prospera Place. Okay. We wanted to figure out what would be the most appropriate ticket to uh, ticket price to charge for, let's say, the Rockets games. All right. Well, here's the scenario that you could have: you could charge one dollar for every ticket, and you're pretty sure that you would sell out every game. All right. But that's not going to make you a whole lot of revenue. You could also charge a thousand dollars every ticket, and there'd be some people that probably pay a thousand dollars for a ticket, but there's not going to be that many. So there's a happy medium in between there, right? And so what we might do is we might try to figure out by using some, uh, I don't know, some analytics of some sort. Uh, to try and figure out what would make you the most amount of money. So as a graph that I just made up here, pretend like we had, uh, I don't know, like cost per ticket right here. And then we had revenue right here. Well, like I said, if you sold tickets for a dollar, uh, you wouldn't make a whole lot of money. If you sold tickets for a thousand dollars, you wouldn't make a whole lot of money. But somewhere in between there, you're going to get a parabola where that is going to make you the most amount of revenue. All right, so that's kind of a realistic situation as to why this is somewhat important. So anyways, we're dealing with word problems uh, today anyways, and I've given you a couple steps to solve these quadratic word problems. Step one says I want, always want you to identify the variable, so that basically means you're going to use a let statement, um, usually to tell me what x or y or whatever else you uh, need to know is. The next one is the big one. It's what students uh, normally struggle with. It says, identify the quantity to be maximized or minimized. So in the question, if they're saying, uh, you know, determine the maximum amount of revenue, then that is the equation that we want to maximize uh, revenue. Or maybe we're trying to find the minimum amount of area or the minimum amount of perimeter, something like that. Always try to identify what we're trying to maximize or minimize as your second step. Step three says the equation, or sorry, the expression must uh, contain only one variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two equations, and you're going to have to substitute one into another so that we only have either x's or y's or just one variable to deal with. Lastly, identify whether the quadratic function has a maximum or minimum value. Then complete the square to determine this value and where it occurs. All right. Uh, lastly, you're going to answer the uh, the question and the problem. So of course, if they ask you what the maximum revenue is, make sure you tell us at the very end. So example one. Two numbers have a different, it says different, should be difference, of 18. Does their product have a maximum or a minimum value? Determine this value and the two numbers. So, step one. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to use a let statement. So it says two numbers. So I'm just going to define what my two numbers are. I'm going to let x equal one number. I'm going to let y equal the other number. Okay, nothing too crazy so far. All right. Now, what do they tell me about these two um, variables? Well, it says the two numbers have a difference of 18. So I'm just going to start there with an equation. I'm going to make this in blue. We have x minus y is equal to 18. Now, how do I know that? Remember, it says the difference between the two numbers is 18. So difference meaning that if you subtract them from one another, you're going to get 18. Step number two said, I want you to determine what is going to be maximized or minimized. Well, this says, does their product have a maximum or minimum value? We don't know what's going to be, if it's going to be max or min yet. But we do know that they said the word product. So I'm going to let P equal X times Y. Since they tell me that they're, they have a product, we know that we're going to be multiplying those together. Now step three says the expression must contain only one variable. So I'm going to take these two equations, one, and two, and I'm going to substitute them in order to just have one variable. Now we always substitute the one equation into whatever we're going to be maximizing or minimizing. So it's going to be this equation is going to get substituted into here. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it for x. So it's going to become x is equal to 18, sorry, y plus 18, like so. All right. Now it made no difference. You could have rearranged it for y. I thought the x looked like the easiest way to go about this. So in step three now, I will take my equation, p is equal to x times y, but for everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put in a y plus 18. So hopefully you notice that I've just substituted that in like so. Now I have p is equal to y squared plus 
18y. Now the question also uh, asked here, they said, does the product have a maximum or minimum? Right from here, you can determine if it has a maximum or minimum. Do you remember if the leading coefficient is positive, then the graph is going to be smiley like that, hence making this a minimum. If the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to make it a maximum. So the situa situation that we have here, uh, the graph is opening upwards, so we would say that it's going to be a minimum. So minimum since it's opening upwards. Now from here, into step four, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to complete the square in order to help solve this question. So completing the square, since I do not have a coefficient in front of the y, I can just leave it like so. So it becomes y squared plus 18y. Now I'm going to do that part where I divide by 2 and square it. When you divide by 2, you get 9. 9 squared is 81, so you have to add 81 and subtract 81. So I'm just completing the square now. This now becomes y squared plus 18y plus 81, like so. So that's going to be the part that you can put in brackets, like so. Now I can complete the square. I have y, this will be all squared, minus 81. You just take this middle term and divide it by 2, we have y plus 9. Now the original question asked you to figure out what these two numbers are, and uh, I suppose you could tell them what the maximum and minimum value is. Well, I'm going to highlight these two guys right here. Whatever is on the outside right here is always going to be whatever your maximum or minimum is. For this uh, question, remember it says, does their product have a maximum or minimum? Well, this told us that the product has negative 81 as a minimum. Now, this tells me that y is going to be equal to, you always do the opposite right here, it's going to be equal to negative 9. So they want you to figure out what these two numbers are. So since the one number was negative 9, if you want to figure out what the other number is, remember that the original equation said that you had, uh, maybe I'll write it right over here, x minus y is equal to 18. Well, how do you determine what x is? Just substitute y on in. So you get negative 9 like so. This tells you that y, or sorry, x plus 9 is equal to 18, or x equals 9. So finally answering the question, it said determine the value and its two numbers. So the value we determined was negative 81. So negative 81 has a minimum when x equals 9 and y equals negative 9. Or you could just say when one number equals 9 and the other number equals negative 9. Example two, this one falls into the category of being a revenue question. You may want to make note of that on the side here. Revenue questions will come up from time to time, and you're going to always use this format. Example two says, every week, a takeout restaurant sells approximately 2,000 chicken wraps for $1.50 each. Through market research, the restaurant manager determines that for every 10 cent increase in price, she will sell 100 fewer wraps. This question is similar to the one that I set up initially with uh, Prospera Place and selling Rockets tickets, for instance. So let's take a look. Uh, I just want to recall a concept with you. And the concept is just going to be, how do you make money? And I always ask my classes this, and they, they sometimes pause for quite a while. They're not really sure what I mean by this. How do you make money? Well, when you're selling something, whether it's some type of little trinket, widget, whatever, piece of clothing, food, whatever, it's always revenue is generated by the number that you sell, so number of items sold, times the price per item. So I just wanted to remind you of that because this is very important for this. Okay? Now, falling back into my uh, appropriate steps to solve a question like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my let statement. For this time, what I'm going to do is since I'm trying to figure out how many uh, increases in price uh, I should make, I'm going to let x equal the number of increases in price. Okay. And so now that I have that, I can go ahead and I can use the equation that I have above here to go and solve this. We have R, my revenue, is equal to the number of items sold. So how many items did they initially start with? This, uh, the items I'm, of course, talking about is chicken wraps. They started with 2,000 wraps. But the problem is, every time they increase it by 10 cents, they're going to lose 100 wraps. So that means every time we increase the price X amount, we lose 100. So if I increase the, it by two times, you would lose 200. Three times, 300, like so. So that's my first part of my uh, equation here. 
The second part says uh, we need to deal with the price per item. So they originally sell it for $1.50. And they're talking about jacking up the price 10 cents uh, a time. So I'm going to write this as 0.1. You could write as 0 0.10 or 0.1x. I'll leave it as 0.10x, like so. All right. So that means every time that uh, we're going to increase it, we're going to basically add a dime, like so. Okay. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property to figure out what I have. So uh, essentially what I mean is FOIL this out. 2,000 times 1.5 gives me 3,000. 2,000 times the 0.1 gives you 200x, negative 150x, and then lastly, negative 10x squared. In this next step, I'm going to gather my like terms and also write them in descending order of power. So the negative 10x squared goes first, the plus 50x goes next, and the 3,000 goes last. So now I have a lovely little quadratic. What we're going to do here is we're going to try to uh, complete the square. And when we complete the square, we're going to be able to figure out how many increases we need to do and also what that maximum revenue is going to be. So let's give this a try. So to complete the square here, we're going to factor out a negative 10 from the first two terms. We now have x squared minus 5x plus 3,000. Okay, now we'll take the middle term the negative 5x, I'm going to divide it by 2, that gives you negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 squared is plus 6.25. You may not be able to do that in your head, that's okay. Uh, like so. Now this last term here in my brackets, I'm going to need to multiply by the leading coefficient, so that's going to pop it outside. This will give me negative 10x, sorry, negative 10, x squared minus 5x plus 6.25, so that's all ready for me to complete the square. That's going to pop outside and give me plus 62.5 plus 3,000. Completing the square finally here, I have now negative 10 x all squared, so this will become negative 2.5, it's always whatever that term is, just divided by 2, plus $3,062.50. Now, you heard me talking money right there, it's because I kind of know what's going on here. Let me show you what I mean, maybe I'll highlight in green. This guy right here always is going to be whatever you've maximized or minimized. So for this example here, this is going to be your max revenue. Okay. Now highlighting this part in green, that's going to tell you how many increases. So the number of increases. Okay. Now the question did say, uh, what do they want you to do? do, 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 do. What, uh, the first question was, what is the price of a wrap that will maximize the, the revenue? Well, since we're doing two and a half increases, like so, and the increases were worth uh, 10 cents each, that tells you that you need to increase it by 25 cents. So the, uh, the price that will maximize revenue is going to be uh, selling the wraps for... So we've said add 25 cents, and they were originally $1.50, so I'd be selling them for $1.75 each. All right. Now, what's the maximum revenue? That kind of is down here with this question right here. Uh, the maximum revenue was this guy right here. Okay. So it tells me that the maximum revenue will be $3,062.50, assuming that you increase it by two and a half times and uh, you sell them for $1.75 each. Okay, So it's two different types of questions that you'll see. A third type is going to be uh, one that has to do often with uh, service area or perimeter. Uh, so as you uh, get through these, I think you'll find them easier and easier. And that concludes this lesson and this unit.